I'm tired of having to put on a brave face in front of my friends. It hurts to see others getting the top parses and rain spots when I keep falling behind. That's when I finally talk to my mother about corruption. Corruption is a once a week injection, depending on your RNG. In most cases, corruption increases your throughput and performance. Users of corruption have noticed a greater rate of invites and a higher IO score. Corruption isn't the first or only solution for performance enhancement, and it's not guaranteed that you'll stop being bad after taking corruption. Ask your doctor for your medical history before taking corruption. Don't take corruption if you're allergic to corruption or a worshiper of the holy light, or are pregnant or have intentions of ever becoming pregnant in your lifetime. Some uses of corruption have experienced skin lesions, fatigue, slowness, paranoia, and in rare cases, sightings of a pink hallucination of their self. In rare cases, taking corruption can cause severe issues, including death and reanimation. Now I'm in control of my destiny and look forward to ushering in the hour of twilight. Talk to your doctor if corruption is right for you. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Warcraft Weekly, the show that... Oh my god, still no alpha! Ah! This week is even lighter on the news as we await the first public alpha build. It's... it's really a slow week. Like, how slow? Well, Icy Veins featured a fan-made loading screen for Shadowlands that is... a fan-made loading screen for Shadowlands. Ooh. Observers reported seeing hints of the new levels for raids after the level squish in Shadowlands, and spoiler alert, if you're at max level, you're still gonna smoke these raids. There really isn't much, so today I'm going to do a kind of recap, maybe a rant, of what I thought about Horrific Visions, the feature that I've been shoving down your throats in the video after video after video, a video essay in the weekly, it's madness. But first, let's give a hearty hello to the amazing patrons and supporters who keep this channel going and endorse player housing in WoW, whether they actually want to or not. We also have a newcomer, so a big thank you and welcome to Kalizath, and a big thumbs up to Lenlock and, um, uh, Achtung. Thank you for taking it to the next level. So, some super quick WoW classic news Arathi Basin will finally open up next week on March 11th. I told you it was quick. In an official post, Blizzard announced the upcoming Shadows Rising book, clearly another ripoff of Shadowbringers if certain comments are to be believed. When Blizzard Watch first broke the news, they included a preview along with an excerpt that's more or less in line with the book's description. In this official reveal, we get another small preview which, once again, is in line with the book's official description, so these aren't what I would call spoilers. There's a link in the description if you would like to read either of the samples. So far, we've seen a perspective from the Horde, and most recently from the Alliance. Uh, based on this pattern, though, if there are to be more previews, I would speculate that at least one more is going to come from the third faction, which is Sylvanas and her allies. They're going to help give some context as to why Sylvanas has ordered the Loa Buan Samdi to be killed. But I have a good feeling that considering that, you know, this is Sylvanas, we ain't gonna find out sh about her plans. What will be interesting is that we're likely to learn a little bit more about your absolute favoritest character ever, Nathanos Blightcaller, before he meets a violent and maybe satisfying death. Undeath, what whatever. With so many months before the July 14th release, we'll see if nearly half of the book becomes available in a free preview from Amazon, like, you know, before the storm was. Yeah, that was, that was real great. Woo! Moving on, just the other day Blizzard gave us an update on how the legendary cloak upgrade beyond level 15 is going to work in patch 8.3. In a post, they outlined what to do in order to keep upgrading your cloak with these malefic cores. All you have to do is either defeat Nazoth in normal or higher difficulty, or to complete a 5 chest run of a horrific vision, and you will receive 1 upgrade per week, which raises your corruption defense by 3. Also keep in mind that there's a skip for Nihilotha, which will enable group to skip almost to the last boss. When news of this first broke months ago, the critics were quick to cry foul that if they were to miss a week or 
if there aren't all Tron new characters, there would be no way to catch up. Or, long story short, infinite grind, alt unfriendly, account wide cloak upgrades, please, sick of BFA, and, um, uh, did I leave anything out? Thanks, although there is a way to catch up. If you are behind, or like if you roll an alt, and if you do want to be caught up, you can do both a Nazoth kill and a full vision run to earn two upgrades a week until you're caught up and then you're back down to one. In short, there is going to be a path for you. It's not really a catch up, nor is it an account wide thing. It's merely a path, so you don't feel like it's impossible to catch up. You'll just feel hopelessly behind. All right, let me get comfy. We're gonna move on to the main topic. It's been two months since the launch of patch 8.3 and its newest feature that will be tossed aside in just a couple of months, Horrific Visions. I'm gonna make this audacious notion and I'm gonna share my thoughts on this game mode from a position of authority, I guess? I've shared perspectives and commentary and guides on the topic. I've gotten a lot of crap over choosing the group talent, even if you're running solo. Sorry about that. No wonder I suck at life. Arr. But after doing the mask runs and getting the title, I would like to share just why is it that I dedicated almost all of my energy into what is basically single player content in an MMO. At times, I'm going to be referring back to the good old Mage Tower back in the Legion days. I completed my uh, I completed the challenge for my main on that before the Tomb of Sargeras opened, so you could say that I beat it when that was considered difficult too. Yeah, I know this is like a weird flex. Let's start off with what I unquestionably did not like about Horrific Visions. Farming for keys is a big pain in the ass. From the get-go, Blizzard has been acknowledging this by tweaking with the numbers pretty much every other week, increasing the amount of currency that we get per activity to the point where we're at today, which is like roughly double the keys that we're used to getting. Which meant that at one point, getting 50 visions per quest instead of the 300 something or other that we get now was somehow okay. The Mage Tower was a different beast. Now, it had an uptime and a downtime, but during its uptime, your first ride was free and later entries were pretty cheap. The comparison isn't very fair though. The Mage Tower was a single encounter per class or role with a cosmetic reward only, while visions were designed to be an alternate route of progression, which means pacing is needed somehow somewhere. If we were to get, say, 10 or even 20 vision runs in a week instead of the three or four that we have right now, what would that really feel like? Titanic research would need to move much slower to compensate, otherwise we would max out our research in a week and we'd trivialize the whole thing. And that would shift the whole grindy feel away from world content and towards visions themselves. Farming dungeons or a single instance is one thing, but farming just Orgrimmar or Stormwind a dozen times a week for the sake of Titanic research? I'm just speaking for myself here, um, but that would that would just feel less fun. It would turn the challenge into a chore, more so if you already think it is. I think Blizzard did pretty decently at delivering on this specific point, that in the majority of vision runs that you complete, you perform better than your previous one. The takeaway for me still is that first free ride. Now, if they added something like that to visions and slightly slowed down the rate of research to make up for it, people would feel much more enticed to hop in to get their attempt in for the week, and then they would decide if they want to do the assault or the dailies for more tries um, across that lockout. That's a typical tactic, right? Like, hey, come on, dude, try it out. The first one's free. Yeah, it's that sort of thing. It's, it's just less creepy. I am a little bit bummed that apart from a feat of strength and a title, there isn't anything else to obtain from the hardest version of Visions aside from gear. There's no unique weapon skin or armor set is what I'm mostly referring to. Given where we are in the expansion though, as opposed to the Mage Tower which opened up in patch 7.2, I'm at least relieved for other players who would otherwise feel compelled to complete a 5 mask run on all of their alts for XYZ reward within a much shorter time frame than in Legion and without an extra tier of content to help. On a smaller note, adding a game mode like this in the final act of an expansion, it's a little bit jarring. And despite the bajillion guides on Wowhead and YouTube, it's taken a while for players to really get into the motions and this added routine. So it's bad optics when we see the many different carnival rides just in BFA, 
from Azerite to Warfronts to Islands to Essences to Corruption to Visions, all of which is standalone and temporary. I hope that this will be handled a lot better in Shadowlands because we're going to see how Torghast is going to grow and mature over the years, and I'd like to see fewer spontaneous features prop up throughout an expansion. So what did I like? The actual vision, just running the stuff. The challenge itself is solo, if you want it to be. It's funny how people gripe about solo content in an MMO because it's a safe argument that most of your time in an MMO is spent soloing anyway, from leveling to questing. If you person at home and on the toilet, if you run group content and expect to not have to talk to or listen to anyone, is that so much different from playing alone and expecting your AI party to perform to its script? Visions were my own personal story, the progression of me of a player who has the courage to be a content creator and a guildmaster and a raid leader, but is absolutely horrified just at the thought of being judged by an IO score, or temporary partnerships with pugs and dungeons where failure isn't just my own, I'm gonna let down four other strangers. Mythic Plus is the answer for players who want higher-end content without the hassles of dealing with very large groups. And I want to be super clear that I'm not attacking Mythic Plus. I respect it, and I don't want Blizzard to change it to bring in someone like me. I think I'm just not the target audience. Instead, we're getting solo content like Visions and soon Torghast. It's going to be the answer for players who want higher-end content without the hassles of dealing with anybody. Visions and its Assault in the Veil and Uldum are an entirely separate form of player progression. Personal progression, if you will. It's my challenge. There is no meta, it's just me. Can I succeed without feeling forced to run Mythic Plus? That's the path that my main went down, and in the end, I got it. Can I succeed without feeling forced to run Heroic Raids or any group content at all? Well, that's the journey that I'm attempting with my Priest and my Death Knight. Alts. I'm playing alts. I haven't seriously played alts since like Wrath of the Lich King, and so far it's been a really fun and humbling journey. It's too early to say, but I dare to posit that visions feel pretty balanced amongst the roles and classes. Now, yes, there are some who've completed visions very quickly thanks to having awesome gear, or stealth, or tanking abilities, or feigned death, or whatever, but consider where we're at right now. There's still a couple of weeks left until we get to our max cloak level, followed by the gradually increasing corruption resistance, designed as the soft nerf until the end of Battle for Azeroth. So basically, relax. But every class and role has still had to pull out all sorts of tricks uh, to overcome the likes of Umbric and Rexar and that f***ing eyeball on Alaria. And even after completing it fully, I'm not done, unlike the Mage Tower. I can still go back for potential gear upgrades, and my performance will continue to improve with each run. So if I was like the Tsar of WoW, if I had my way, I would make your first vision run per reset not require a vessel or a key. Just don't do weird things like give us a free key each week uh, so we can bank it. Just give us a free run to compel us to hop onto our characters and our alts and change nothing else apart from whatever tweaks that they're already doing with Coalescing Visions. If you're a playtime conspiracy nut, I would argue that teasing us with a freebie is likely to get more people to play longer as opposed to making the wall higher per alt. Anyway, I think I've gushed enough, but I'd like to hear some of your thoughts now. After all the tweaks and changes to Visions, how do you feel about it? Is it too hard or too easy? Is it not worth the effort or boo corruption? Because, make no mistake, that plays a lot into our enjoyment, and thank you World Quest Ring for really bringing it home. So let's wrap things up with a big, big thank you to everyone who's been visiting the channel and the stream and Discord. You guys have made February an amazing, amazing month, but I'll still need your help getting to 50,000 subscribers because that sounds like a, a nice and almost unattainable number. I can only pay for so many bots. Help me. Stay tuned to this channel and suffer along with me as we wait for the alpha to go public and we will talk smack about Shadowlands together. Thanks again for coming. Don't forget to like the video. Come on, do it right there. Come on. All right, cool. And we'll see you next week. But until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy.